I don't know what's going on in Jacksonville, but people are fired up in Jacksonville. They want to win. Eric Parker running for Jacksonville City Council District number two. Good evening, Liberty Mothers. My name is Eric Parker, and I'm running for uh, City Council in Jacksonville, Florida. I wanted to introduce myself to y'all and give you a brief understanding of who I am, where I'm from, and why I'm running for City Council. I wanted to share some information with you about some of the problems with our local politics. I also wanted to talk about the importance of the party support for the local candidates. And of course, I need to have a talk with y'all about campaign contributions for your fellow libertarians that are running for local office. I grew up in the town of Uli, which is just north of District 2 in Jacksonville, which is where I'm running for city council. With redistricting for gerrymandering happening soon, district lines and numbers can change. Currently, District 2 is the most northeast part of Jacksonville. I went to high school in Ferdinand Beach, which is when the Libertarian seat was planted. I had an economics teacher who was a Libertarian, and believe it or not, the school board somehow allowed him to teach his students about laissez-faire economics and Austrian economics. After graduating high school and then turning 18, I registered to vote as a Republican. Boo! <laughs> you see, I grew up lower middle class. Neither one of my parents went to college. I applied to colleges and didn't get accepted. Eventually, I got to college and graduated with a bachelor's. I, I, really, I really had no direction in life. This is when I decided to enlist in the Army Reserves. Who will? I served nine years in the Army Reserves with one deployment to Iraq and one deployment to Guantanamo Bay. including, but not limited to, government waste and out-of-control government spending. Early on as a young adult, I identified as a small government Republican, or a Ron Paul Republican. I stayed registered as a Republican so I could vote for Ron Paul and Rand Paul in their respective primaries. Sometime around 2014, I had a discussion with the Libertarian candidate for the governor of Florida about my reason for staying in the Republican Party and feeling disenfranchised by the Republican Party, at the same time knowing I was becoming more and more libertarian. That's when I learned that the more people that register as libertarians, the closer we are to reaching major party status, which comes with some of its own benefits. So, the dumps of fire that was 2020 happens, and I finally decided to change my party to libertarian. Six months after the joining the LPF and getting more involved locally, attending Duval County affiliate meetings, and having discussions with other like-minded individuals, I decided to run for public office. Since I made the decision to run for city council, which was about six months ago, I've been attending nearly every city council meeting and speaking on one or two bills at each meeting. All but one bill, I have been in opposition. The first bill I spoke in opposition of was the Lot J bill. It was in the news. They wanted to give $100 million to the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Sure, I'm a fan of the team, but I'm not a fan of giving away our tax dollars to a billboard. <laughs> that bill, because of community action, did not pass, but the bill still received bipartisan support. The second bill I spoke in opposition of was 2020-0759, which prohibited large gatherings of 50 or more people and fighting business owners if they didn't comply with the imposed limit. Boo! <laughs> this would be illegal in Jacksonville. That bill did not pass with bipartisan support. Or, excuse me, that bill did pass with bipartisan support. For six months straight, twice a month, I've been able to speak in opposition for our local government, given millions, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars to well-connected bureaucrats, millionaires, billionaires, and cronies. And for six months, every bill but the first bill has passed with some level of bipartisan support. Since that very first meeting, and because I've noticed 
the same professional wrestling that I've heard others speak about at the federal level, I mostly stuck to speaking in opposition of corporate welfare. These local politicians and the two-party system have been bought by big business, and that's who we are competing against. That is exactly why electing three libertarians to Jacksonville City Council would be a major game changer. With three of us up here at City Hall, it would be much more difficult to pass a bill for more taxes, more spending, or more corporate welfare. There will no longer be an easy vote to limit individuals' freedom of assembly. Imagine, every bill to repeal burdensome regulations for small business owners automatically coming with two co-sponsors. This major feat can't be accomplished without your help. Yes, we will need and appreciate volunteers to sign away, fold bank, or gather petition signatures. While that level of participation may be more important than financial contributions, there is still a certain level of financial contributions that are going to be needed. However, somehow now we will be getting the same level of contributions from large corporations that our opponents are getting, especially corporations that expect any form of corporate welfare. As uncomfortable as it is to ask for financial contributions, it's going to be a requirement if we seriously want to win. It felt entirely antithetical to file tax paperwork with the IRS for an employee identification number when filing to run as a libertarian candidate. But, to paraphrase Shooter McGavin, we have to play as <laughs> ice. This is why, if we're going to be able to compete with the players, we're going to need your individual contributions. The required expenses have already going to roll in, and the initial contributions I've made to myself are beginning to dwindle. I'm still nearly a year and nine months away from the first election, and already I've had to spend money for a domain name, a premium web page to be able to use the domain name, this is that one come up, and business cards. Speaking of money, my campaign PayPal is at Eric P for Jacks. There's other ways to get in touch as well, and if you're interested in helping out some other way, please don't find me sometime this weekend. And, but, to talk about money even further, the bad part. In 2019, campaigns for city council that won in their district, most of them raised over $200,000 to their individual candidate campaigns. That doesn't even include political action hits. Now, I'm not saying our campaigns need $200,000. There's a certain amount of funding that needs to be raised. That's exactly what one of the city council members told me. The day after I filed with the supervisor of elections office, I got a phone call from one of the council members. They wanted me to know that people were listening to what I'm saying, and a lot of them feel I'm stepping on some toes. But that's a good thing. Yeah. Woo! Most of them, they felt as though they were offering words of encouragement as well as warning. The council person mentioned that they were in the before they ran for city council, but knew they would need the backing of a major party. They also recommended that I reach out to the other groups and parties that may not be associated with the Libertarian Party to find some support. District 2 is a very Republican district, and with my strategy of speaking up against corporate welfare, I could potentially get some support from the other side of the aisle. Jacksonville does a unitary election to local office, which means the top two candidates, regardless of the party, move to the general election. For the 2015 primary, the Republicans ran two candidates, and the Democrats ran one, and the Dem or excuse me, the Democrats ran one, and the Democrats won. The primary by a little over 300 votes because the Republicans split the vote and the Democrats moved to the general election along with the leading Republican. The Republican ended up winning at, at the general election with 57.9% of the vote. Getting to the general election is a real possibility, but the more challenged part will be winning the general election. In 2019, the Republican of my district won the general election with 70.9% of the votes. 9,071 in total. But there's a silver lining. There are 229 registered libertarians in my district, but there's also 11,152 with no party affiliation, 678 independents, and 51 other third party voters in my current district. I just need to get my message out of them. If I'm able to flip a few liberty loving Republicans and Democrats to the Libertarian Party, that would be big help too. Therefore, we need your support starting now. 
We can't wait until next year to start getting out in front of people and sharing our message of limited government, less taxes, more freedom, more liberty, and more accountability. I truly believe that with your help, Jacksonville can have three libertarians in city council after the 2023 election. What I'm not going to do is tow another group or party on. I would much rather get funding from the libertarians and people that are ready to show the establishment that the libertarian party means business and that we're ready to be considered a major party. Together, let's change the status quo. Let's show the city of Jacksonville, the bold new city of the South, who the bold party is. To paraphrase the character Pepper Brooks from the movie Dodgeball, it's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Parker.